When I think of this summer, one word comes to mind, food. To my surprise, this summer was shaped by my foodie awakening. It began with my realization that kombucha is actually a godsend and does not taste like beer and developed as I checked off more and more restaurants from my must tries checklist. Hope you enjoy this documentation of a few of my fave dining experiences from July. Good morning, everyone. I can feel myself getting a bit sick. I've probably slept a total of 20 hours in the past week, so not doing great. I've just been sitting up editing or working on my food blog, which I'm obsessed with. I started this Instagram. It's private for now, but I might make it public. I'm just like kind of shy because I'm obviously not a food connoisseur. I just um, love to eat and I love to go to restaurants and I love to criticize things and it's just like for shits and giggles but I'm having so much fun doing it. I take photos of everything I eat. I probably have thousands of photos to sift through and I'm trying to make it pretty so it's a whole thing. It's making me want to start like just a food blog. It's so much fun. So I'm working on that a lot and I also have a spreadsheet I've been doing for that like restaurants I want to go to. I'm very invested in this. I'm also working on my Europe Chronicles which takes a very long time to edit because I want them to be perfect that is a non-negotiable for me now when it comes to creating things is i'm not gonna post just to post anymore because it makes me feel terrible when i don't like what i put out i'm done with putting so much pressure on myself in the end i do so much better when i approach things with less of a stressful mindset and i'm also trying to be less of a perfectionist because sometimes i just it's a bit too much people ask me like how long does it take you to edit one video obviously it depends how long the video is but i think my first paris chronicles took me at least 48 hours of straight editing but I think it's more because it's a whole creative process for me like obviously I have the footage but then the editing like I want to make it more like a story not just like straight shots and like all these things obviously I've been editing for a while at this point but I have never taken a class so I'm just figuring it out as I go and trying to develop new skills in my editing techniques so that's also very time consuming and then deciding what look I want do I want this font or that font like it's very very time consuming so I'm just honestly cutting myself a bit of slack being like it's okay that it took you three weeks after you got back to get out the first video and it's okay that it's going to take you probably a couple months to get them all out also there are gonna be like probably 20 or so so prepare yourselves I'm gonna go get some kombucha Cheers. I'm so excited for this restaurant. Italian with Japanese touch. Yeah, touch. They have burrata. Well, then we're good. <laughs> Anything with burrata. Nude project, thrifted. No, it's my music. No. It's DC. Hey, yeah. Oh, now you want to know it. Eh? Also, Mila. They have like a whiskey sour type cocktail. Oh, that's the whole reason you want to go. <laughs> The saga begins with tiramisu, which is quite the opener. Walking into the restaurant, we were welcomed by a grand dining room with a huge bar. The room was enveloped in natural light, parsing through the large open glass windows. We started off ordering cocktails, beer for dad, a mango mocktail for Mila, and an amaretto sour for me. The drinks were humongous and super tasty. <music> For appetizers, we got tataki with truffle capers and yuzu ponzu, roasted eggplant and marinara with ricotta, caprese salad. incredible focaccia I've ever had in my life, which was dressed with an acidic tomato dressing, just absolutely phenomenal. Then for the main courses, we shared lasagna and truffle pasta, the super fresh pasta and decadent sauce made for a delightful dish. Finally, for dessert, we obviously had to try their tiramisu. Expectations were very high since the place is named after the famous dessert and they truly delivered. It was great and the portion was so generous. Fire. I usually get the matcha cookie and white chocolate. 
also has raspberry inside. Okay, never mind. It has fruit in it. on deck. Let's go! After a slow day, I walked over to hang out with Amrita. I was feeling kind of anxious on this day and it helped to have company and just hang out. watched The Spectacular Now, which is perfect, and ordered Slice and Soda, a much needed cozy night. The following night we went to Luca as a family, this established Italian restaurant in Little Italy. I got Aperol Spritz to start off and Mila got a Negroni, truly the most soapy tasting drink I've ever had. I've not reached that level of sophistication just yet. For now, I will be sticking to my ultra sweet cocktails. I got a dollop of burrata, which was by far the creamiest burrata I've ever tried, almost to a fault. It was quite heavy. Mila and mom got pesto gnocchi, which was so soft and flavorful. And lastly, I had some of my aunt's bouillabaisse, which was delicious. After our meal, we headed to Cinema Public to screen Hit the Road by Pana Panahi, a really touching film that follows an Iranian family's road trip across the countryside. It was really funny, but also very sad. I may or may not have shed a tear at the end. Going to Antoinette. Ant oh my gosh, Antonietta. I've been wanting to go for a while. Looks really good. They like change their menu often and use fresh ingredients and the venue is adorable. So I'm very excited. I'm wearing my UNIF dress, obviously. Yay. This restaurant is a gem of a spot. The interior was so intimate and the staff so personable and the decorations made it feel like we were enjoying a meal in someone's home. Loving the game, I know I don't. You cast your spell and I went under. Amrita started out with this burrata crostini that had an anchovy on top, which Sadie promptly ate. I don't know if I can take it anymore. Uh, <laughs> I can't get it. So I stay here and hold my heart when you walk out the door. Then she got the butter sauce ricotta ravioli, which she adored, while Sadie and I enjoyed their margarita pizzas. Truly the best pizza I've had in Montreal. <laughs> the crust was so doughy and salty and soft, absolutely delectable. And the marinara was so delicious, which I think is the most important part of any pizza. For me, it's really all about the sauce. There's no way with every smile with every tear. Then came the tiramisu. I think it's the best tiramisu in the rest It's not I'm eating right now. This is the last one that I've today. We're changing the review. On second thought, it's not the best tiramisu I've ever had. It may be the best tiramisu I've had today, but it's a bit too long. I'm going to keep my normal empty ears and talk about it. Yeah, I agree. Sorry for lying. <laughs> I can't speak. That was the best dinner I've had all day. That was the best dinner I've had in the past two hours. Okay, we're but we sound like we didn't like it. Like it was actually really yeah, good. Yeah, it was yeah. so yeah. good. It was very good. Terrible. She really liked the pizza, except for she had one bite too much. Yeah, <laughs> I took one bite too much, so then it like kind of tainted the rest of the meal. And now we're gonna party. Dinner at Names. This 
this day, I went to Names on the Way to grab some drinks with some friends I hadn't seen in a while. After a few outfit changes, I made my way there and got a couple cocktails, which were great. The next day, Emerita and I went to La Tamalera, this new Mexican spot on Fairmount. guacamole was so amazing salty which is crucial for me taste these are very homemade chips the chips are really good the box is good eight out of ten that's a nut. Their tacos were not what we expected. However, they were fried, which I didn't love, but the filling was super tasty. I definitely want to go back for that guac. And that is all for today. Hope you enjoyed this and stay tuned for more.